right now to Bloomberg Surveillance, where Noah Rubini, chairman of Rubini Global Economics and professor of economics at NYU Stern School of Business, is speaking with Tom Keen and Ken Pruitt. Let's listen in. The economic growth in the third quarter might be uh, certainly below the second quarter and below 1%, somewhere between zero and uh, 1%, for the following reason. Uh, what was sustaining growth in the first half of the year were a bunch of uh, tailwinds that are now becoming headwinds, where the fiscal stimulus that uh, is now becoming a drag on economic growth in the second half of the year, where the inventory adjustment that sustained a lot of growth, excluding the inventory, final sales were growing barely 1% in the first half, we had the base effects, we had the census, and we had a whole bunch of tax policies that stole demand from the future, demand and growth. You know, we had cash for clunkers, cash for green appliances, and investment tax credit, the first time home buyer tax credit. Now all these things are expiring, and you've already seen housing collapse in new home sales, collapse in existing home sales. So all these factors were temporary. They were boosting growth in the first half of the year, and in spite of all these tailwinds, we got a pathetic 1.6% growth below a trend of 1% yeah, in Q2. Q now all this stuff is expired, and therefore the second half is going to be worse than the first half. At best, it's going to be 1%, at worst, uh, closer to 0%. And the latest data from July suggests already a slowdown. July retail sales are right. worse. We have durable goods orders that are sharply slowing yeah, down. Nora, what is your uh, residential and non-residential are collapsing, so everything indicates that actually <clears throat> the slowdown has already occurred. Compared Nora, to two. you're on the circuit. You're talking to everyone. Let's say your circuit lands you at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. What are you going to tell Larry Summers and the others to jumpstart us, the policy prescription to nudge us towards GDP growth? What's your advice to a team beleaguered that needs to meet with a president whose party's in trouble in Washington? Well, first of all, I would say that given this deleveraging in the U.S. economy, we cannot prevent slow economic growth for a number of years. We could try every policy tool, but we have accepted the fact there's going to be slow economic growth, and there is even a risk of a double deep recession. I don't think we can go back to a high economic growth, and we're running out of policy bullets. That's the other important point. You know, a year ago when the economy was in free fall, we could use all the policy bullets. We could push down the Fed funds to zero and double base money. We could have a budget deficit of 10% of GDP. We could backstop the financial system to the tune of $10 trillion. Today, instead, with the risk of a double dip, we're running out of fiscal okay, policy, Nora, you, for you're, example. You're one of the leaders in international economics. So what a lot of people don't know is you're not out on the speaker circuit. You're writing textbooks. You're teaching. You're thinking. The two-minute drill is this. We're going to see a Fed go to one of those policy bullets, which is another trillion dollars of QE. What are the knock-on effects of the Fed adding a trillion dollars to their balance sheet when you look at Irish spreads widening and the other tensions around the world? There's got to be second-round effects to the, the, the bursting of the balance sheet. Well, my view is at this point we're in a liquidity trap, and even more QE is not going to make any difference. You know, we have now done QE. Base money has gone from $800 billion to $2.2 trillion. We have doubled base money money by buying $1.8 trillion of securities by the Fed. The banks are sitting on $1 trillion of excess reserves. They're not lending it, even if they're earning only 25 basis points on those reserves. Suppose we add another trillion dollar of excess reserves. Why would banks loan that money if they're not loaning their first trillion dollar? There are problems with the financial... Well, problems. that was Neil Rubini of NYU Stern School of Business talking about uh, basically that we are running out of options to stimulate the economy.